There's a number of things that we're trying to do as, as a European network against racism. The first one is to make sure that anti-racism remains at the top of the political agenda. Since Black Lives Matter, we've been able to actually make a momentum happen where actually anti-racism has reached the European level. It is recognized as a top priority for the European Commission. And there's lots of national action plans against racism, which are making sure that the member states do their part. So for us, monitoring and making sure that that is actually being executed effectively at the member state level is something that's keeping us very much busy day in and day out. We're also very much interested in new topics where anti-racism uh, has to be present in order to prevent racism from rearing its ugly head. So these are things, for example, like climate change. The topic is actually, you might think, is very far away from anti-racism, but actually the communities which are most exposed to the negative impacts of climate change and also are the least resilient to actually combat it are racialized communities. So there is a strong link between anti-racism work and ensuring that we have a society which is sustainable and able to address climate change. We see the same thing in digital societies. So digital tech is also a place where racialized people are not very present in the design of new technology and new softwares, and yet they are negatively impacted by them, either because these technologies enable more racism to proliferate or because they are unable to actually be represented in those spaces. So for us, there's a lot of work there to, to happen. And I would say the last part is ensuring that the anti-racist movement is sufficiently financed to do the work that it has to do day in and day out in, all over Europe. And that's what ENR is all about. And so we talked a little bit to technology. What do you think is the biggest risk and the biggest possibility that we have going forward? In terms of the biggest threat, well, social media, we can see what happens. So social media is creating a society where we are able to filter out lots of different voices and perspectives, and it is polarizing society in a very violent way. So we see that actually social media is a tool being used to target racialized individuals, and they are facing violence that is unseen and unheard of. And because of the anonymity of digital technology, it is made possible and there's very little remedies to protect people which are facing racism online. In terms of the possibilities, while well, Black Lives Matter is a beautiful example of what can happen when social media is actually mobilized to support the anti-racist cause. Thanks to Black Lives Matter, the story of George Floyd became a worldwide sensation and it became possible to start talking about the impact that racism has on people in business, in society, in politics. And those topics and those conversations would not have happened were it not for social media elevating and amplifying what happened in the US with George Floyd. And I'm thinking, of course, grassroots uh, movements are very important. But then again, how can Sweden as a country play part in this European network? Well, racism happens in, in local communities. It happens in cities. So for us, actually, having allies that are working at the local level is absolutely critical. And Sweden has to play its part. It has to be a strong voice. And actually, Sweden as a country has often supported civil society organizations, not just in Sweden, but across Europe. And has enabled, actually, best practice to emerge from all over Europe. And that's been made possible thanks to Swedish financing. So having Sweden as a vanguard supporting anti-racism, not just in Sweden, but outside of Sweden, is incredibly and critically important because these organizations often are struggling for financial survival. So actually having that support is really important. As I said, racism is something that happens in local communities. So unfortunately, Sweden is like every other country exposed to racism. Individuals who are living in Sweden experience racism. And it's really important for the Swedish people when they experience it and when they see it, that they call it out, that they show that they are against racism, that they show support to those who are victims of racism, and that they do their utmost to make sure that they don't stay silent. Because very often, people who face racism have to do it silently, or they feel like they are the only ones who are fighting it, and that everybody else is expecting them to solve the problem. And of course, we know that that's not the case. In order to solve racism, we need the whole of society to be mobilized, and we need Swedish people to be mobilized along with us. Thank you so much for taking your time. Thank, Thank you. you so much.